In this video, we will introduce a new type of automaton, the pushdown automata. The pushdown automata are an extension of the finite automata. They also have a set of states and read the input from left to right, but they additionally have memory in a device with a stack-like access. This means that elements can be inserted, read, and deleted only at the stack stop. The reason to study this kind of automata is because of their close relation to context-free grammars, a relation that will be studied later. The pushdown automata can be formalized in many ways. Note that now, the automaton's transition must depend not only on the input symbol, but also on the contents of the stack stop. It may even happen that the stack is empty, case that may affect the run. Obviously, the decision of acceptance or rejection of a word will depend on whether it has been completely read or not. As a side effect of a state change, the stack must be updated by adding elements or deleting them. There are many different things to take into account. We will describe a specific formalization defined decades ago. It tries to minimize the amount of different signals that must be handled in the states. For instance, to avoid testing if the stack is empty, we will assume that initially it contains a special symbol at its bottom. If we handle the stack properly, when this symbol appears, we will know that only it remains in the stack. On the other hand, to avoid having an, an operation to remove the top element, we will assume that the top is always removed when accessed. If we did not want to remove it, in the automaton transition, we will specify that it is written again. Finally, to avoid checking if we have reached the end of the word, we will assume that it is accepted if a run reaches an accepting state after reading the whole word. Recall that we also had this assumption with finite automata. As we have already said, these assumptions are taken to simplify the automaton definition. However, they are somehow questionable because they may produce automata with counterintuitive behaviors. Let's see an example. We want to recognize the language ANBN. Here we have the Poisson automaton that recognizes it, according to the following interpretation. The initial state is represented like this. Transitions are labeled with a pair of words separated by a bar. To its left, we find the condition of the transition's execution, and to its right, we specify the action. The condition consists of one or two symbols. If there are two symbols, the first one corresponds to the symbol that we expect to find at the stack stop in order to execute the action, and the second one corresponds to the symbol that we expect to read from the input in order to execute the action. If there is only one symbol, it corresponds to the symbol that we expect to find at the stack stop in order to execute the action, and we won't read any symbol from the input. The action performed in a transition always includes removing the stack top element. To the right of the bar in the transitions levels, we have the symbols that will be written in the stack after removing the symbol in the level condition. They are specified from left to right in the order that they are pushed in the stack. In particular, the rightmost symbol will be at the stack stop after executing the transition. Let's study this automaton further. With Z0, we denote the stack's bottom symbol. We will assume that initially the stack only contains Z0. The first step reads the stack stop and finds Z0. Since there exists a transition with Z0, but it expects a symbol from the input, we read the input. In case we have found an A, the transition is executed. The stack Z0 is removed due to the automatic pop of the stack. Since we wanted to keep it, we write it again and we also add this uppercase A, in order to record that we have seen an A. From this state we keep reading the input A's and we use the stack to record how many A's we have seen so far. In a transition action, the first A is used to record again the A that is automatically removed, and the second one to record that we have just seen another A. When the first B is reached, we remove the stack stop A. We will remove as many A's as B's read from the input until only the stack's bottom symbol is found in the stack. When we reach this state, we move to an accepting a state without reading from the input because we know that we have seen as many A's as B's. If there are no more symbols in the input, then the word is accepted. Else, since there are no further transitions defined, the word is rejected. We say that a pushdown automaton accepts a word if there exists an accepting run. A simple and useful way to describe the state of a run, which we call a configuration, is by using words of this kind, where W1 represents the stack's contents from bottom to top, Q represents a current state, and W2 represents what is still and read from the input. A PDA can be described using rewrite rules that modify configuration, interpreted as we have just seen. For instance, the previous PDA can be represented using this set of rules. Given the stack stop symbol, the current state, and the symbol read from the input, we denote what is written at the stack stop and which state is reached. 
For example, with this word as input, the initial configuration is this one, and we have this possible execution. Using this idea of rewrite rules, we can formalize the pushdown automata as follows. A pushdown automaton, or PDA, will be a tuple containing the following elements. The state set, the input alphabet, the stack alphabet, the transition rule set, the initial state, the stack's bottom symbol, and the accepting a state set. The left-hand side of the transition rules have a stack symbol, followed by a state, followed by an input symbol or lambda. In the later case, we will call it a lambda transition. The right-hand side of the rules have a word over the stack's alphabet followed by a state. We will say that a word is accepted by the automaton if, starting from the initial configuration, there exists a rewrite sequence that reaches a configuration of this kind, where Q is an accepting state. We say that the automaton is deterministic if each configuration allows just one rule to be applied. Note that the definition differs from the one used for finite automata, where we also impose that the transition was always possible. This definition of determinism is rather unpleasant for this kind of pushdown machine so simplified, because there may exist different runs even when the PDA is deterministic. We say that the PDA is a single acceptance pushdown automaton when, even if it is non-deterministic, for each accepted word there exists a single accepting run.